Turn with me to the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 34, Exodus chapter 34. You know, if you read your Bible, you find that God has many names, many different names. For example, he is Elohim. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is El Shaddai. These are all names of God. But there's one name that God has that I don't know if you have ever noticed it or not. But if you have it, this will shock you. It will absolutely shock you. I want you to look with me in Exodus. I'm going to read verses 6 through 8. And then I'm going to jump over to verse 14. And the Bible says, And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. And that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. And then look over in verse 14. For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is what? Jealous. Jealous is a jealous God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, how we thank you and praise you for being able to gather in the house. And God, what we're talking about tonight is so, so important. I ask you, Father, to give me the ability, God, to speak in such a way that God all can understand. Lord, that Jesus would be glorified God, that you would be, that you would be glorified. We pray, Father, that you'll just take control. God, I ask you to give us attentive hearts because truly what we're talking about, God affects us today. So God, you have your way. Glorify thy son. In Jesus Christ's name, we do pray. Amen. The Lord, after naming many of his wonderful attributes in verses 6 and 7, after saying, I am merciful and gracious, I am long-suffering, I am abundant in goodness and truth, I I keep mercy for thousands, I forgive iniquity and transgressions and sin." after saying all of that about himself, in verse 14, he makes, beloved, a shocking statement about himself. He says, my name is jealous. The Lord is a jealous God. Folks, the word jealous here is the Hebrew word can now, can now. And it means Listen to this. Punishing those who hate me. Punishing those who hate me. Folks, God is warning them. He is telling them that while I am a God who will do all these wonderful things for you, my name is Jealous. I'm jealous over you. I am a jealous God. He's saying in effect, beloved, if you you worship other gods, I will punish you. I will punish you. For by worshiping other gods, you prove you hate me. You prove you hate me. I want you to listen very carefully to what I'm saying tonight. Six times in the Old Testament, excuse me, in in the uh, Pentateuch, 
God proclaims he is a jealous God. And all six times, listen, his jealousy is provoked by worshiping other gods. Other gods. He warns them. I'm jealous over you. Don't worship other gods. It will bring devastating punishment if you do. Folks, this sin of bowing to other gods is grievous to the heart of God Almighty. So grievous that God says, my name is jealous. Beloved, it is a part of God's character. It is a part of of God's nature. My name is Jealous. Ken now, I will utterly destroy you if you bow to other gods. Now, why is this sin so grievous to God? Why is he so jealous? Folks, some of you may even be wondering, how can God be jealous? I mean, isn't jealousy a sin? That's what the book of Galatians tells us. And God can't sin, amen? He can't sin. Folks, there is a difference between godly jealousy. If you remember, Paul told the Corinthians, I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy. There is a difference in godly jealousy and jealousy, as we often use the word, when we, when we think of jealousy, we think of someone, beloved, being jealous over, someone, over what someone else has. For example, someone is jealous uh, because somebody else is pretty. Bud Webb is so jealous of me because I'm so pretty. I mean, you know, that's the way we use the word. Or someone is talented and so they're jealous. Or someone is, is athletic or someone is gifted. And they're jealous, beloved, of that person. That is sin. That is sin. But God, beloved, is not jealous over someone's looks or talents or what they have. Listen, God is jealous when we give to false gods what belongs to him. What belongs to him. When we give to a false god our worship. When we give to a false god our devotion. When we give to a false god our love, our service. God is jealous because only God deserves our worship. Only God deserves, beloved, our devotion. Only God deserves our love. These things belong to him, beloved, and and him alone, him alone. And when we give what belongs to him to someone or something else, he is jealous. He is jealous. Do you see the difference? Sinful jealousy is is resentment towards someone because they have, beloved, what you desire. But godly jealousy is when others, beloved, are given what belongs to God. What belongs to God. So when God's people who have been so blessed by God Give to someone or something else, beloved, that which only God deserves, which belongs to him, he is jealous. He is jealous. Stop and think for just a moment. Why does God do all these wonderful things for us? Why does, is he merciful to us? Why, beloved, uh, is he long-suffering with us? Why, beloved, does he deal with us in grace? Why does he do these wonderful things for us? Is it because we deserve them? No, no. Is it because, beloved, we earn them by our goodness? Is it because we are so good? No, no. He gives these things to us because he loves us so much. 
He loves us. He loves us so much, so supremely, that, beloved, he gave the ultimate gift. He gave his own son to die in our place. Now, I don't know about you, but I can't comprehend love so great as that. I can't fathom that kind of love. Yet I know he loves me that much, that much. God's greatest desire is for us, beloved, to love him in return, to love him as he loves us. But when we heap, beloved, our love and our worship and our loyalty and our devotion on something or someone else, beloved, that something or someone becomes our God. And we are bowing to a false God. And God Almighty is jealous because we give what belongs to him to another, to another. Now follow me. All this is concerning God's people. God's people. God never tells the heathen. He never tells the unbeliever that he is jealous over them. But those who believe on him, beloved, his people, he says, I am jealous over you. I'm jealous. So when God says, my name is jealous, I am a jealous God, beloved, it is a dire warning to his people. Don't you worship, don't you love, don't you devote, don't you give your loyalty to other gods or destruction will follow, will follow. Did not God warn Israel? Did he not warn them? They were, they are his people, his chosen people, amen? amen? Beloved, over and over, loud and clear, he warned them. Exodus chapter 20, verse five. I, first, the first commandment, thou shalt have no other gods before me. I, the Lord God, is... I am a jealous God visiting the iniquity on the fathers and upon the children unto the third and fourth generation, God said. Exodus 34, verse 14, our text. For thou shalt worship no other God. For the Lord, whom name is jealous, is a jealous God, a punishing God. Deuteronomy Four, verse 24, for the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. Deuteronomy 5, 9, same thing. Deuteronomy 6, 15, for the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you. Least the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Oh, God warned Israel over and over again. God told Israel he was jealous over them, his people, and he promised destruction if they bowed to other gods. But oh, how God dealt with them in mercy and goodness and grace. I mean, Beloved, he brought them through the wilderness. They murmured and complained the whole way, but he brought them through the wilderness. That was the goodness and grace of God, amen? The mercy of God. He helped them, beloved, conquer the promised land. Time and time again, he forgave them their sin and disobedience, and he blessed them beyond measure. He raised up David, beloved, to defeat their enemies. And under Solomon, beloved, they prospered as they had never prospered before. Oh, but after Solomon, after Solomon, the kingdom divided. There was a northern kingdom that left, beloved, left the Lord. Ten tribes, the northern kingdom, called the kingdom of Israel. Beloved, they they went after other gods. 
The southern kingdom, beloved, pretty much stayed true to God. But the northern kingdom led by Jeroboam to begin with and then beloved by, by Ahab and a, a whole line of wicked kings turned to idols. But God was merciful. God was long-suffering. He sent prophets to them like Elijah and, and Elisha, beloved, to call them back to him. But Israel was getting more and more involved with idol worship. So great, beloved, was the Lord's jealousy kindled that he warned them. He told them the Assyrians would arise and come and conquer them and take them away from that land if they did not repent. But they wouldn't. They wouldn't. They continued bowing to their golden calves, to their Molochs and, and their Baals, and they would not repent. And so the Assyrians came, just like God had told them, and conquered Israel and took those ten tribes away. I mean, took them out of the land, beloved took them away. Why did this happen to Israel? Because God is a jealous God because they turned to idols, to false gods. By the time the Assyrians, uh, by the time the, Ass the, the Assyrians came, beloved idol worship had started creeping into Judah, the southern kingdom. The, 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 the priest, beloved, were becoming more and more corrupt. And again, God warned Judah, beloved, as he had Israel in the north. But Judah said, hey, we've got the temple here in Jerusalem. We like worshiping other gods. We haven't abandoned God. We're, we're just worshiping, worshiping him along with other gods. We're God's chosen people. He won't destroy us. Along came Isaiah and Jeremiah and said, oh, Ariel, Ariel, you're living in a dream. God will judge. Ariel is Jerusalem, by the way. God will judge. They told them, beloved, these prophets told them if they didn't repent, God would judge them with the Babylonians. Again, again, God was saying, I am a jealous God. They ignored God. They ignored his prophets. And about 100 years after the Assyrians destroyed the northern kingdom, Nebuchadnezzar came his mighty army and destroyed Judah. He even destroyed Solomon's temple that they were so proud of. And he took many away captive to Babylon. And there they stayed for 70 years just as God said they would till God the Lord allowed a remnant to come back to the land. After that time, they no longer worshiped idols, graven images, but they changed their worship. They changed their worship to a religious system, a system built on tradition of the rabbis instead of what God said, instead of what God told them, not God's word. And soon, soon, beloved, there was an apostasy. The Pharisees arose up during this time. And they based their religion on tradition. Tradition. The Sadducees. The Sadducees, beloved, they didn't believe anything. They were the liberals of their day. So it was in the midst of this religious apostasy, God 
took a body of flesh and came to this earth. And we know his name as what? Come on. Jesus. Jesus. Surely, surely when they met God's son face to face, they would turn from their new uh, 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 these new uh, uh, idols or false gods of pride and, and, and of, of uh, uh, organized religion and turn back to God. Surely they would. But instead, they rejected God's Son and they crucified Him, holding to their false religion. Their false religion. Oh, how the jealousy of the Lord was provoked over these false gods, beloved, that they were bowing to. And so this time, God sent the Romans, beloved, and they came in 70 AD and leveled the temple. And beloved, they crucified so many that you could not find a tree. And they led many away captive. And then in 132 AD, they did it again in the Bar Kokhba revolt. And beloved, this time Rome utterly destroyed Israel and dispersed the Jews all over the world. And there they stayed, beloved, until God brought them back as he had promised in 1948. Oh, he warned them. He warned them, I am a jealous God. But they would not listen and won't listen even to this day as a nation, they won't listen until Jesus returns the second time. It's the same with America. You stop and think about it. It's the same with America. Beloved, I'm gonna give you a refresher course in history because they're trying to rewrite it in American history. This nation, listen to me, was founded on God, on God. It was founded a Christian nation. Beloved, her constitution, her bill of rights are grounded on Christian principles. Her people, beloved, when this country was born, for the most part, beloved, were God's people, people who believed and practiced the precepts of God. Her schools were all, beloved, founded on, uh, were Bible-oriented, founded on the Word of God. Her colleges, her universe, Harvard, Yale, they were they were started as Bible colleges. God himself said, righteousness exalteth a nation. And beloved, America was righteous, serving and worshiping the true and living God. So God blessed this nation mightily, mightily. God blessed us. The Lord was her God. The Lord was her object of worship and all was good and the churches were full every Sunday. They were full. But over the years, things began to change. God's victories in battle, beloved, became the politicians' victories. God's blessings and prosperity became due in the minds and hearts of people to the banks and, and the industrial revolution. That's where the prosperity came from. God's wisdom began to take a back seat to man's wisdom. Money and success became our worship, became our devotion, taking God's place 
Our schools, beloved, and universities became secular and liberal. Our churches, beloved, became empty. And our statesmen became politicians. Science became another God for people to worship instead of God, for people to bow to instead of God. And as we, beloved, as a nation prospered, pleasure and entertainment became another new God in America. But God was long-suffering and merciful. He sent us the D.L. Moody's. He sent us the Billy Sundays. He sent us, beloved, the Wilbur Chapman's. He sent us uh, men like like, uh, uh, Billy Graham to call us back to him as a nation. But more and more, more and more, God became a part-time hobby to most Americans. To most Americans. And then, beloved, he became a dead ritual to many with no real, real worship until at last he became a joke to the majority. And the worship of man, of science, of pleasure, and the newest God on the block of wokeness, of wokeness, grew and grew and grew in America. God warned us. I am a jealous God, God says. My name is jealous. Can now I punish those who hate me? And there is no greater hatred for God than to give the worship that belongs to him to someone or something else. And folks, that's why I believe, and I say this with a broken heart, That's why I believe that America is under the judgment of God right now. I believe that. We are seeing, we are seeing, beloved, its destruction happen before our very eyes. All you gotta do is turn on the news. Our morals as a nation are gone. They're gone. Our sense of right and wrong has disappeared. Beloved, our leaders are totally blind. And Jesus said, if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall in the ditch. And that's where we're headed, the ditch. Our universities that one time sent out preachers to preach the gospel all over the world, now sent out activists to burn and kill and destroy. And as God utterly destroyed Israel, he will utterly destroy America. Because you see, he is a jealous God. A jealous God. Yet there's another group that is God's people. And that's the church. The church. The church that Jesus died for. Beloved, they certainly are the people of God. Amen? Amen. They would never, they would never turn to false gods, would they? They would never do that. Well, let's see. When a church or denomination bows to the teaching of evolution, I want you to know they are bowing to science and they are no longer bowing to God. They are bowing to science. 
When they say the days of creation weren't literal days, but thousands of years, they are bowing to science. They're saying that science knows more about creation than the God who created it. They're bowing to a false God. When a church says, oh, we're going to change our position on marriage, Because our position, a man and a woman, is not in accordance with society today. Like the Scottish, the 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 Church of Scotland just did. They just did that. Like so many denominations, beloved, have done, who said, Well, now we're going to have gay marriages. Because society tells us that's that's the right thing to do. They are bowing to the culture. They are bowing to society. No longer are they bowing to God. No longer. When a church member says, and I've heard this so many times, Well, the church I go to no longer preaches the truth of God, no longer preaches the old time gospel, but I'm going to stay because my family has been members of this church for so many years. They're not bowing to God. They're bowing to their fathers. When the church says, the Bible is out of date, We no longer believe in a literal hell. We no longer believe in preaching against sin. We no longer believe that Jesus is the only way. They have stopped bowing to God and are bowing to man's reasoning. And that, beloved, is the condition of multitudes of churches across this land. Across this land. More and more churches and denominations, beloved, are turning from the one true living God and turning to other gods. Little gods. God has warned them. God has warned them. I am a jealous God. I will love you, I will bless you, I will be merciful to you, I will forgive your sins, but I am a jealous God visiting the, 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 uh, I can't read my own writing here, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation. And that is exactly what's happened to America. Beloved, our children and and the third and fourth generation are suffering. Because we turn to other gods. Other gods. I'm telling you folks, if churches don't repent of their idol worship, God's judgment will fall on those churches. Just like it did Israel and just like it is falling on America. God will not tolerate the worship of false gods. He has proven that over and over and over and over and over again. Somebody says, preacher, how will he judge these churches, preacher? I don't know. I don't know. He might take away our freedom to worship. He might. He may, beloved, destroy reprobate uh, churches entirely or he may just leave them here at the rapture to endure the tribulation. I don't know. But this one thing I do know, God is a jealous God. He will judge those who hate him. Those who give what is rightfully his, 
to some other so-called God. But that brings us to you and me. You and me as individual Christians. This is a good, good church. And I'm not saying that to tickle your ears. I wouldn't say it to tickle your ears. I've seen a lot of churches. This is a good church. A good church. This is, beloved, a church... I believe we preach and teach the truth, the word of God. I believe as a church, beloved, we worship the one true living God. I believe that. If I didn't, I'd resign right now. I'd resign right now. But do each of us, listen to me, do each of us individually Put God first in our lives. In our lives. Do we bow to Him and Him alone? Do we worship Him and Him alone? Do we follow Him and Him alone? Is He our first love? Our first love. Is he the object of our devotion? Is he the one to whom our loyalty is given above all others and anything else? Or or are all these little gods are are they the ones that we put first that we love first? that we worship more than God. He has warned us. He has warned us. I, the Lord, am a jealous God. Folks, he will not tolerate other gods in the lives of any of his It will bring the judgment of God upon you. That's what his name means when he says, my name is Jealous. We need to examine ourselves. We need to be sure that little, some little God hadn't crept into our heart. That we actually put before the one true living God. That we are bowing to. And we need to pray that this church remains true to God. I want you to stand. Heads bowed and eyes closed.